This is an Ottoman Turkish ball made by Joel Charmak. This is a prototype and he was uh, so kind that he shipped uh, two of his balls for testing. The balls have been taken by Emel Sarıpınar, who had been in Budapest for educational reasons and spent four months in a university there. She met uh, Joel Charmak and take the balls uh, to bring to Istanbul. And the first thing that the balls actually did was enjoying a Bosphorus afternoon here with me and Emel. This is an all racing ball and the traditional belief is that these all racing balls are not very efficient balls. Uh, in 1970s uh, where the uh, fiberglass was used for ball making for the first time, uh, they backed the balls, uh, the sun balls with fiberglass first and then they uh, decided to go to laminated fiberglass with a wooden skeleton uh, reinforced with fiberglass and meanwhile probably in 1980s or so they tried to uh, make balls uh, of solid fiberglass as well but then uh, the industry decided to make these balls only for children because of the uh, relatively low efficiency of these balls but uh, some points should be taken into consideration like the changes or the improvement of the material the fiberglass and the epoxy glues are not the same like the uh, counterparts 40 years ago and so and the construction may make some difference as well because uh, the Turkish design with uh, reflex and recurve and short ball um, may make a difference compared to the long balls uh, that this technology was used for 40 years ago and these are the very first shots uh, I'm doing with the uh, uh, ball made by the Hungarian ball here, Jean Charma. We haven't made any knocking point at the moment, so I'm going to knock the arrow approximately to a good position. Accuracy is not bad. This is a quite a short distance, but there is no knocking point at the moment. The, the arrows are heavy. This is a 40, 49 pounder. It's approximately 50 pounds at my jaw. And the, the arrows are as heavy as 570 grains. According to the very first observations, the arrows are quite fast for such a tiny bow with such a uh, uh, relatively low draw weight. Okay, the string is made quite good with a tonch tube, the traditional way of knotting the loop to the string. And the string uh, has been probably made of Dacron or similar material. And this is the other ball uh, that Joel Charmak uh, sent uh, to test. Actually, this is the uh, 40, 41 pounder. The other one the, was the 49 pound draw weight. And now I have two arrows, one of them weighs uh, 467 and the other one 450 uh, grains. At my jaw, which is approximately 29 to 29 and a half inches, the ball uh, weighs approximately 43 pounds. So uh, the arrows are approximately uh, 10 grains per pound.
The ball seems to be quite accurate from 12 meter distance. I shot at this small bottle cap. The arrows are a little bit on the right side, which may uh, be up to the uh, spine value of the arrow. Uh, which I really don't know. I just got the arrow from a friend of mine here. So, but there's a good grouping with two arrows from 12 meter distance. And the flight was quite stable and fast. These balls have string bridges, unlike many automobiles in the museum's collections. But recently, uh, some boyers went to Dresden and they uh, examined the Dresden collection and they found some uh, automobiles that are uh, shorter than the Crimean Tatar balls with a very similar construction, uh, but have string bridges. So we can say that the string bridges are acceptable for the common uh, Ottoman Turkish ball design. And uh, despite these uh, string bridges, we realized that there was some offset after uh, several shots with the 41 pound ball, uh, which may be uh, unsafe actually for the ball. Uh, it can get unstrung during the shot. We'll try it again with larger arrows. Okay. Here's the offset. We really don't know whether it's going to be dangerous or not, but uh, we uh, stop actually shooting uh, without correcting the position of the string. But after correcting it, it shoots again well, uh, but probably at each shot, it should be corrected. Maybe, maybe a little bit concavity or a little bit larger string bridges may help uh, uh, avoid this. Which base size? <laughs> Twisting the limb towards the other direction to correct the twist of the limb did not help much, actually, which happened the same with the Crimean Tatar of Jolt Chermak. But uh, with the Crimean Tatar ball, we didn't have any uh, further complication uh, last time we tested the ball. The 49-pounder does not have any offset on the limb, uh, at least not on the string. There's just a slight twist on one of the limbs, but doesn't matter at all because during the shots we didn't have the same problem that we had with the 41-pounder. There's no uh, slipping towards any side of the limb uh, during or after the shot, even if we shoot fast to aerial discs with, uh, by, by uh, knocking the arrows from the hand. It's so stable and with no problem. Okay, this is uh, Joel Charmat's ball. This is the 49 pounder one. And the, here we are shooting an arrow which weighs 515 grains and the ball uh, pulls 49 pounds at 28 inches. We marked 28 inches on the arrow so that we can uh, draw the arrow exactly to 28 inches and we'll see uh, how many feet per second we're going to get from this arrow. Selim is going to check whether I draw to the exa exact uh, marked length. Okay, 163 feet per second. This arrow is a little bit uh, above the 10 grain per pound uh, ratio. The second shot. Down. 174. Uh, it may it may be up to the uh, 
drawing time. So I, I'm going to be faster like I did at the second shot. So. One six six one and six six and the last shot the three we're going to get the mean value from the three uh, shots. So one and six four. It's approximately one hundred six four one one hundred six six. Uh, so and the uh, arrow is a little bit above the ten grain per pound ratio. Video. Tamam hazır devam ediyorum. Çekiyorum. 14. Bu gelişmiş oldu. 5,9 The draw length of traditional bows are measured from the back of the bow but because the bulldozer side of the Turkish bow grip is the back side he decided to take the belly side as the reference point so please add a whole inch to all the uh, values on the, on the X the, which means that we measured the draw length up to 30 inches, which you can see only uh, a measurement up to uh, 29 inches on the graphic. As expected, the curve reveals a steep increase at the very beginning because of the reflex of the ball, and then a slight parabolic uh, continuity, and then at around uh, 26 inches, the stacking starts, and for such a short ball, which is approximately 115 centimeters or so, this is a quite a good uh, behavior. So uh, you can draw the ball easily up to 28 inches with uh, no uh, observable uh, stacking. The potential energy that a ball stores is calculated by using definite integral, uh, which actually gives the surface just under underneath of the curve. And as you see, as a ball consists of only uh, resin, composite resins, uh, the 49 pounder ball stores quite a good amount of energy. The efficiency of the ball is determined by the percentage of energy uh, which is transferred to the arrow. So when we draw a ball, a certain amount of energy is stored, uh, which is up to the material used to make the ball, uh, the uh, length of the ball, the draw weight of the ball, the draw length of the archer, etc. And all these parameters uh, somehow determine the uh, stored potential energy. But when we release the string, the, some of this energy is wasted uh, and uh, wasted because of the mass of the limbs, because of the mass of, of the string, again because of the characteristics of the materials used uh, in making the bow. So uh, the higher the percentage of the transferred energy, the more efficient is the bow. And uh, because the uh, energy that the arrow absorbs from the bow is higher when the arrow is uh, heavier, we can consider that this is uh, a higher percentage uh, compared uh, to the energy transfer uh, when we shoot, for example, an 8 gram per pound arrow or a 9 gram per, per pound of arrow.
And how about the effectiveness of the ball? If you're hunting, then you need a, a, an efficient ball other than uh, handling a heavy draw weight ball. And if you, uh, if you look at the performance of this ball, uh, you see that the, uh, the kinetic energy that the 10.5 grain per pound arrow provides is approximately 30 foot pounds, which is uh, about the uh, minimum limit for deer sized game. For deer sized game, it's enough to have, a, uh, have an arrow that carries 25 foot pounds of energy. But uh, this is a, an excellent hobby ball, actually. First of all, as a traditional archer, if you want to uh, hold a part of history in your hand, then the, uh, the design of the ball is quite important, much more important than the, than the speed of the arrow. Uh, if you are a, a competitive archer, then of course you may use a more efficient ball uh, for uh, co competitive purposes. But if you want to have a hobby ball which is very close in the, to the authentic design, which is the case for this ball, uh, and uh, the, with a very smooth draw, for example, for stump shooting or for just uh, shooting for pleasure, uh, this ball uh, is an excellent ball, uh, in my opinion. And uh, even for hunting, if you go for a small game or for deer-sized game, uh, you can easily uh, uh, have this, uh, this ball in your hand as a reliable weapon.